If you know about load balancers, have you ever wondered what does it make if you skip the load balancer and do the load balancing yourself and what benefit do you get out of it? In the microservices architecture using a service discovery design pattern, let's see how we can use client side load balancing and what are the advantages and when can we use the client side load balancing. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. In order to explain the client side load balancing, let's take a simple architecture of a booking application. So the booking application has a service called booking service and the booking service is going to talk with a payment gateway. For making it a bit complex, let's add multiple versions of the payment service. Imagine that there are three different instances of the payment service. This is done to make sure we have a resilient payment service. And also this payment service connects to the third party applications via any connectivity platforms like REST or MQs etc. Also this particular payment service talks with an account service. Even the booking service should be able to get the data from the account service. And this account service holds the user info which could be your credit card information or your order information. Now, if you notice that the booking service talks with payment servers and the account servers and the payment service again talks with account servers. Imagine that these are deployed in containers or in the cloud environment. These are bound to change over a period of time. In order to make the application more scalable, let's add the service registry design pattern into this application and see what are the different challenges which we are getting as a part of that. So this is what we have. We have the booking service, we have the payment services. So let's add a service registry. If you're not sure about what is a service registry, do take a look at my video on service registry. I'll give the link for the cards in the top right corner. You can take a look at that. When we have a service registry in our deployment diagram, all the services which needs to communicate with each other need to register with the service registry. So the account service needs to register with the service registry, same with the payment service and each instance of the payment service needs to be registered with the service registry. And again, booking service needs to connect to the payment registry and the account service. So it needs to register to the service registry as well. Now coming to the use case of booking service accessing the payment service. Now, since there are three different instances of the same payment service, these could be running in different instances and of different machines. It could be running in different containers. If you are having a Kubernetes environment, it might be running in different pods and you don't know how to load balance them. And especially if you're using service registry, you need to load balance and redirect to a particular instance. It's slightly difficult, isn't it? That is when we will follow the style of using either a client side load balancer or a server side load balancer. So client side load balancers are when the booking service directly chooses which service to hit. For example, here the booking service gets all the information from the service registry back about the payment service saying there are three instances of payment service running in these, these, these nodes and these are the ports. And now booking service chooses one of the application and hits that particular application. So if you look at it here, it retrieves the data from the service registry and it is directly hitting only one of the payment service from the booking service. So here the booking service acts as a client and the client chooses which particular service to hit directly. And that is why we call this as client side load balancing. There is also something called a server side load balancing, which we will take a look at in the next video. However, looking at the client side load balancing, the advantages of the client side load balancing are you don't have to have a central load balancer, which does the load balancing for you. So your service can choose the load balancing technique because if let's say for payment service, you want to have a different technique from the booking service and from let's say another service, if you're accessing the payment service, you want to have a different type of load balancing strategy, you can embed that into your client itself. So client side load balancers are useful when you want to have different load balancing strategies for your services and you can choose which service to hit 
from your client side so there are different services like ribbon which is created by netflix and if you are using spring cloud services if you are using a spring boot application to design your booking servers your payment servers and your account service you can use the spring cloud implementation of ribbon directly so ribbon does client side load balancing and if let's say you are not using spring boot platform you can directly use the ribbon library into your application i hope you guys were able to understand what is client side load balancing if you are not able to understand what is load balancing you can take a look at my video on what is load balancer we'll look at what is server side load balancing in the next video as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much